Hi friends, MD Vegan. Today is my gentle juice fasting day. That's once a week and four times a month to be more precise because sometimes between two days there's more. 11 days, that is a moon phase when the moon on his way around the earth um, has a point where it's in balance. Yeah, the, the gravity um, is in balance with the others with the sun and the earth and the moon, then the equilibrium state is after 11 days after the full and after the new moon. It's called Ikadashi. Uh, and, and these special days are fasting days, the best fasting days, because the moon governs uh, the movement of the water uh, to a certain extent on earth. We know that science. And the water is a cleansing element. So the yogis believe that the, when the balance, the earth, uh, the water element is balanced, by the moon and the earth and how it is related, that day is the best day to fast. And uh, yeah, that's why we have these fasting days. They are a little bit irregular, you know, not every week, but four in a month. So uh, average every week, one day. But in the end, it doesn't really matter when you fast. I think the most important thing is that regularly, once a week, one whole day and forever. Yeah? And then if you, if you decide to choose a moon calendar as a full moon, new moon, 11 days after and so, that is a specific. It has to be also with the schedule of your life. Although I don't want to disrupt my social relationships because of I do my fasting. I, I fit it in that the birthday party is or so I don't fast. I just delay it a little bit, the fasting. But I go to the birthday party and enjoy <laughs> with the others together. So that's priorities. Social life is also important as health. Health is a um, physical, mental and social well-being. So all this has to be balanced. That's what most understand is health today. So it's a complex thing, not just looking at the body, looking at everything, holistic idea. And fasting has also been uh, practiced all over the planet, through all the cultures all the time. Only in modern times when the industrialized agriculture, where we have food available all the time in many parts of the world, industrialized countries, that, that is, of course, um, we don't fast um, regularly. People don't fast anymore, but that's only for a small time of our, of our human history. Right? Um, we have always fasted because we had no food. And that is not bad if you only check science also says when you only fast one day if you are healthy and feel great then one day can do nothing or no harm to you so this this kind of fasting of one day only called it gentle juice fasting can everybody can do it actually suppose you are healthy of course yeah that it has important if you are sick or something if don't feel good then maybe you should call or ask a doctor or a health professional first before you do that because also, when you fast longer time, two days, three days or so, there is a risk that the inner organs are harmed and don't even notice. So all these things, I wash it away. I just feel great and fast one day a week. Nothing can go wrong. I like the easiest way. And in the long run, you know, for years and years to do that, which I have been doing now, to me, that's the best way to do it. Gentle juice fasting is perfect. It's also from tree yoga. That is um, art and science of flow, of yoga flow. Um, Yogini Kaliji brought it into uh, the yoga world in 1980 when um, uh, the flow um, came to her and she, since then, every day, she, her body moves in a um, systematized way through postures, all kinds of pure postures. There's classical yoga postures, all the classical postures and so many more sequences. Uh, breathing patterns all comes to that by just intuitive, just comes like that. She can, she just has let, lets go and just happens. And you write it down and we have this, these books of, of yoga flows that's now all over the world. Everybody now does, does the flow, but the real flow comes to yoga from tree yoga. That is the art and science of the flow. That is a special science and art to it. Very nice. But the main point about it is, um, for me, in the fasting, is the gentleness, the non-violence. The flow is a non-violent way to move. Yeah? That is the most important thing here, all for vegan. This tree yoga is a vegan yoga style. You can always practice tree yoga. You don't need to be vegan. But the idea of tree yoga is, is non-violent. The flow is non-violent. And our lifestyle is non-violent. 
So we can't eat animals. We don't do that. We don't take the body of another person. And fasting also, one day fasting to me has shown to be so nice and easy to transition my diet. If I want to have a more healthy diet, yeah, I start with a day of fasting. I prepare, get everything I need, a gentle juice fasting, that is to me, I want on a delightful day. I don't want to, I mean, don't want to force myself or uh, take uh, my uh, sensual pleasures away. No, I drink delicious juices, a lot of water, teas, plant milks, broth, veggie broth, everything. What is nice and delicious. And uh, the opportunity to make juice, uh, I must look forward once a week. I, I, I love the juices and today I make a very complex juice. Usually um, I make a simple recipes. I make a new recipe every day to include the more, more and more ingredients or plants into my diet, to my menu. That is, uh, has proven to be uh, more and more important, yeah? the, with the, especially with the industrialized um, food system. Yeah? We reduce the plants, the different plants we eat to a minimum. Plant has to be uh, standardized to produce it in mass production. So we have only um, so many plants available um, in the supermarkets usually, but indigenous people eat thousands of different plants a year. We only maybe 20, 30, 40, every single one of us. So if we don't even notice that. Now we notice more and more since we are vegan movement began globally, um, that there is so much to plants to explore, plants for food, and it's also related to health a lot. People didn't think about eating and health so much, in science at least. Everybody knows, of course, an apple is healthy <laughs> and, 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 and a candy is not. It has been known all the time, but the science didn't care that so much. Now they do, they begin to research plant-based diet, and so it has been proven to be healthier now. We know that now, but it took some time, right? And the more we learn, the more we learn that the more different plants we eat, the better. Yeah. Different plants all the time, all colors of plants, all red, green, you know, all the colors that are there. Today I make this complex juice where all the different ingredients are in. Usually I make, to, to make sure that I add more and more plants to my diet, I make new, new recipes every single day. It's an easy way to make sure you have more and more plants. But to do that, I have to begin very simple. That's the only way I can do that. Recipe has to be very simple. At least three ingredients, not to make it too simple. So three ingredients at the minimum, I say, because then you have a certain complexity, a certain magic, a certain secret in there. You don't know what it is when you have three. When you have one ingredient, you know what it is. But with three, ah, you don't really, I'm not so sure. You have to be trained. So with simple recipes, I begin. And then I explore what an ingredient does to me. And the fasting day is perfect for that because the senses are enhanced. I feel more. Uh, I feel what the plant does to my body <clears throat> and how they play together. So I explore the simple recipes, um, the ingredients, how they, what they do to me, if I like them and why and what happens, how they taste like and how they play together, how they affect each other. It's called food synergy or nutritional synergy how the nutrients, how the fluid, food, how they play together. Because, for example, some, some ingredients uh, enhance each other. They make each other more powerful. Others um, um, block each other. They don't taste well together, for example. Yeah? These kind of things. That is a, a whole of science. It begins to, to evolve. But a chef, you know, a chef naturally knows that. A chef wants to know. Uh, all he does is, all they do, the chefs, is they combine ingredients yeah, to make something more than its parts. And uh, this juice is complex. <clears throat> I make a, 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 a red juice. It's a beet juice. Uh, that is uh, one of the most fascinating plants to make, uh, create new flavors. I uh, have never seen any other plant uh, that I can create so different flavors, surprisingly different flavors from, than beet. It's an earth flavor. It's very dense and heavy. And if you put other ingredients to it, it opens up and all kinds of flavor come out. You don't even know that it is a beet. <laughs> I don't go into that in detail now, but today I made the beet juice together with the green juice. So the red and the green juice together. And the greens here are parsley and kale. Yeah. Uh, this is very cleansing, 
it's maybe uh, one of the cleansing, most cleansing um, herbs we have. Yeah? Green parsley is sour green flavor and it um, cleanses the body of heavy metals. It's very powerful. And this is kale. Uh, that is one of the most, maybe the nut most nutrient dense plants at all. Yeah? It's fascinating. Uh, kale, uh, there is no other plant that has so many plant, uh, different um, nutrients in it and so many as the kale. It's the most powerful we have from the nutrients wise, you know. It has uh, iron, it has calcium, it has uh, vitamins, minerals, <laughs> I, I, fiber. I, I, can't, I, I, I can't stop that. It's really, you have to look it up. It's really amazing what's in kale. Yeah? Kale is so powerful. Highly recommend it. Um, so it's a kale, parsley, pear, uh, uh, beet juice. It's very powerful. Green and red together. Always turns red with beet. It's always dominating everything. That's why they call it the beet juice. <laughs> but um, uh, when you add green to red, it turns even darker. You will see. We will see when I make this juice. I didn't make it before, <clears throat> but I have experienced. I have made many beet juices, many kale juices, many parsley juices too. And I put them all together. And I have a... Another um, um, another veggie that is a carrot that is a very easy to juice. Uh, it is like a pear, like a beet. It's an earth flavor, but it's a very simple earth flavor. You can drink a beet juice, uh, ca carrot juice by itself. It always tastes great. Yeah. But the pear, the beet juice, you can't. That is too dense. That is it scratches in the throat, and so beet juice is difficult. You have to add something. Carrot, not it's easy. So I have carrots, beets, yeah. carrot supports the beet a little bit, makes it a little bit lighter. And then the two greens. It's a very powerful veggie juice with carrots, beets, kale and parsley. I have to balance these strong flavors with fruit. That's what I usually do in a juice. I have veggies, they can have a little bit of different, difficult flavor, maybe some bitterness, some sharpness, you know, these kind of things. And then I have the sweet and sour flavors from the fruit to balance these and I love that, you know, this balance between this uh, bitter flavors, the greens, and the sweet and sour flavors from the fruit. That is nice. That's why I like it, you know, to play these balances. And a wonderful juice um, to balance um, the veggies is uh, apple, orange, pear juice. Uh, that juice by itself is a miracle. I'm going to try. I didn't try that before. I was so amazed when I tried it first time. I said, wow. All these three together, I never saw that in a shop. Yeah? But try it, it's amazing. It's, it's perfectly sweet and sour balance with a little bit bitter. And it has also this creaminess from the pear. So you have two, two apples and two oranges. Uh, usually I take uh, all parts equal. Uh, apple, orange and pear. This time I take a little bit more pear. Yeah? Because um, here I have three or four pears. They're right in season and they're wonderful right now. I just cleanse them a little bit and then I put them into the juice together with the peel, everything. The pears and the apples, not the orange, of course, that's too strong. Uh, because the pear is so much, because uh, they are very special. The pears can be perfect with kale and um, also with beet and also with parsley. Parsley pear is a classic. Beet pear is a classic. Pear was the first fruit that made beet delicious, a beet juice. And kale. Uh, usually I add kale. Uh, to apple and pear, but the pear is needed uh, to make it sweeter because the, the kale can, depends on the kale you have, can be more or less bitter, can be very nice to add a little bit sweetness on the pear. So the pear is here the main fruit, but um, the orange and the apple are also very important. So I have here these three fruit juice, this fantastic apple pear orange juice, and lemon and ginger. This is an enhancement of other flavors. This makes it fresh. Yeah, and this enhances the ingredients, uh, makes it better digestible, better assimilation. The fire, the fire of the ginger, uh, that is an element of the ancient um, Ayurvedic holistic medicine, uh, the health science, health art and science. The ginger is, is called the, the fire element, has a fire element, and the fire um, enhances the absorption, the digestion. They call the fire um, the one that takes that that um, makes it possible that we digest um, our food, our nutrients, take it in. So that is that is a very important thing. So I, I juice it now. I try it. I'm excited to what it tastes like. You know, if you if I make these complex ingredients uh, juices here with nine ingredients, 
Yeah. Um, that is interesting. It can go wrong. Sometimes I make some, some one of these complex juices because, and then I find out, oh, there is too much of this and that, and it tastes too sweet or too bitter, or there is something wrong or so. Because when you have so many ingredients, you don't always know what's wrong. So I always begin with small numbers of ingredients, as I said before, because when I know the parts and I may put them together, it's easier to understand what I have to change. So I'll do that right now and then I'll come back in a second. Chase, taste it for you. Hey, this is my juice <laughs> and um, I put everything in but uh, I left some of the peel out yeah. I take only a little bit of the peel yeah, there's something I some I, I always have when I when I use a lemon but often often to enhance the others flavors and I use a little bit of the peel I try but sometimes um, there are so many green and bitter flavors that it is too much I can't do it uh, the, the, uh, the yellow color on the peel of the lemon is the healthiest thing in the lemon scientifically spoken. But when the flavor is too, too bitter, then it's nothing healthy, that is the yuck. <laughs> yeah, so it you can ruin the whole flavor. It's very powerful. Um, so I took a little bit, and it's nice, but not too much. Okay, the others are all in. And I have a little bit more juice. This is a liter, about a liter. And I have a little bit more, another quarter or so. Um, but it looks nice. It has a a dark red flavor, a color that have that was clear. It's beet juice with the greens that turns a little bit of darker red. I like these dark red colors. So it's very nice. Uh, you know, also with blueberries or so, you can create amazing dark red tones. Uh, ah, <laughs> with greens and blueberries. Ah, amazing smoothies and so beautiful. So color is a topic for itself. Now I see the color is beautiful. The texture also nice. It's a a little bit creamy, but it's mostly runny. Yeah. Uh, when you add pears, some for example, then you get it runnier. Adding carrots makes it run. Uh, uh, pears makes it creamy, and the pear is soft. Uh, our carrot makes it runny. Greens make it runny usually. What you do when you juice, you take all the fiber out of the of the produce. The fiber goes out. That can what cannot be digested usually. That is the fiber. It is here. That is the trester, the pulp. That is the juice that takes that out. And what remains is only the nutrients, the water, the nutrients, the colors. That goes in the body. And there's no digestion needed. It goes directly to the bloodstream. So I drink, I have to drink it slowly because when it goes all at once in the bloodstream, I drink, I pour it down. And then I can have a sugar spike. If I have a lot of sugar in there, other nutrients, sugar goes up in the blood and then I'm confused. The body doesn't know what to do. <laughs> so you have to drink it, I mean, I have to drink it slowly. On a fasting day, these juices, they are like a whole meal. Drink it slowly, I enjoy the flavor, and then I can taste everything that's in there, what it does to my body. That's the main part, that. It's really uh, strengthening. These beet juices are strengthening, give me more endurance. The greens, they give me like a deep breath uh, down to the, every cell, and so the sugar energy, instant energy, it burns in the cell like like immediately and so it's a very very nice the juices are wonderful and if the flavor is right then I enjoy yeah but it has to be tasty and I will taste that now so the texture is okay it's not too creamy not too runny I'll show you that in a moment but what does it taste like that's the main thing mm. Mm. Oh. awesome it was a good decision to take more pears than orange and apple because the pear gets it such a gentleness, gentle sweetness. Yeah. The orange is sour sweetness, powerful, citrus fruit. The apple is a balanced sweet and sour, very balanced fruit. Yeah. Nice. But the pear is so sweet, so heavy, sweet, so gentle. And all these powerful juices, the kale is very powerful. Yeah. The beat, rah, boom, <laughs> and the, the pear makes it so, mm, yeah, like a big mama, <laughs> so to say, yeah. So that's a nice the flavor here, and all the flavors are so nicely balanced. I can I can taste the pear a little bit. It is the most uh, the, the biggest part of the fruit, a pear. So 
understandably, I can taste it a little bit. It's a very nice flavor, this, this softness, this warmness, this coziness from the pear. Very nice in this juice with these powerful nutrients. Yeah, and the parsley, yeah, also very powerful like the kale. Or maybe even more powerful because this heavy, strong cleansing. Yeah, you can drink too much, much parsley juice and then the cleansing gets so strong that you get a headache or something. So you can overdo it with parsley if you let some people pass, uh, fast for several days, they are trained, and then they drink parsley juices, and it's very powerful cleanser. So when you do just one parsley juice, there's no problem, but if you do it longer and longer, it can be a very powerful cleanser. So that is also a very strong flavor, and, and it's very nicely caught by the pear and uh, the others here. So it's an amazing juice. And you know what I do with these complex juices, and the real chefs, you know, the great chefs, they have very complex recipes. You know, they put all kinds of ingredients and you have no idea what they do. So you eat their food, you are just blown away. <laughs> but you have no idea how they did that. That's a magician, you know, don't, don't know. <laughs> but, and that is like when you do the juice uh, with nine ingredients, it's awesome. The flavor is so complex, so fascinating, so, so, mirror, so, so that's a miracle. You don't know what, when you hit the, when you hit the point. You may get it wrong. You don't know what to do. It's disgusting. Get you <laughs> no fun. Uh, but when you know it, what to do? Make it a, a, a complex flavor. It's so nice. So ah, this is really good. <laughs> I show you what it looks like. Yeah, and it was so tasty. Uh, yeah, the, the measurements are really nice. You can you can copy that juice and make it yourself. But I would say if you see the, the creaminess here, it's a wonderful texture. I, I would uh, recommend, if you don't have so much experience in juicing, I would recommend um, either you can copy this juice, yeah, you make it exactly as I made it here, like two apples, two oranges, three or four pears, and the size, but you see the, the ingredients. I hold them into little, little containers close to the camera, and then you see how much I have around. Not precise, but the relation. You, you can get one lemon, not too much of a peel, nice piece of ginger, three or four inches or so, you know, nice pot, two cups on, or so of uh, kale, a large, nice um, beet, and a half bunch of parsley or so. This kind, you know, you saw it, yeah. And you make this juice, I get, I would say it will be very delicious. And, or you can also, uh, begin with just the carrot juice. You just juice carrots. Juice carrots. Beautiful carrot. It tastes nice. And if it's a little bit bitter, because it's a little bit older, you maybe add an orange or an apple. And it's always nice. Yeah. You begin with these juices. Or you, beat a ju you juice a beet and add a little pear. One beet, one pear. Same amount. Maybe a little lemon. You have a perfect juice. You begin with these easy recipes. And the green juices, that comes later. They are a little bit more difficult. So to make a delicious kale juice, yeah, you need some more experience. Yeah. I have all these juices, small, uh, simple ones on my channel. You can watch it there, you can find out, but you can also experiment for yourself. I would always say begin with only one, two, three ingredients. Very simple and they figure out what's best, yeah, what you like, more of this, more of that. That's very easy. You don't need the precise measurement there. And then later you build up, you get more and more complex recipes like this one. This is really a really nice one. Yeah. But I don't say the carrot juice is also nice. I always love a great carrot juice. You go into a, a snack bar. Uh, they have a Persian snack bar here in Berlin a lot. They make just carrot juices. You eat a hummus or something and drink a carrot juice with it. Ah, orange juice, perfection. Doesn't have to be complex. Doesn't have to be. But also very enjoyable. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. If you like, like my video, subscribe MDV on YouTube. Have another recipe every single day and find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. <laughs> and there is a, there's a Facebook page also you might be interested. I don't know. And it's called Tree Yoga Moon Fasting. Uh, the name Tree Yoga Moon Fasting, because the moon fasting, the gentle juice fasting, comes from Tree Yoga. As I said, Yogi Nikaiji, inventor of the founder of Tree Yoga. The flow comes into yoga, yoga world, now it's everywhere. It comes from her, actually, it's fascinating. And um, she also inspired me to oh, ask some, the whole people, my, many people do that now, gentle juice fasting. So that's why the, the Facebook page is called uh, Tree Yoga Moon Fasting, and it has a moon calendar for the best fasting days. It has all my juice recipes um, every week and, and more. 
Sisu.